Um, this is the first time uh, we, are, we are organizing an education panel. Uh, so, uh, the reason, uh, let me make sure, okay. So the, the reason is that we are taking new initiatives in the center, one of them being uh, we are bringing uh, programs, education programs into the center and want to tr become truly global. So we are introducing a master's program, one year master's program that starts in January, finishes in December. In between, we are going to have internships. And the reason I'm mentioning is that I would need all the industry par participants to help me out on this in terms of uh, contact me or I'll, I'll, I'll go through those who attended here and give you a call to see what other possibilities exist to connect with the uh, center and give us or uh, work with our students on internships and projects and in a continuing fashion. And this is a truly global program because we are not just doing it, Granite, we are partnering with different universities across the world. So uh, Indian Institute of Management, and we are hoping to work with Tianjin and maybe other universities in, the, in China and in Mexico and Central Europe. So we are trying to set up something which is global. So I thought there's nothing better way to find out what is that you would expect in a program. So I wanted to have this debate or this panel telling us from the industry perspective, what do you expect? What is that we should be teaching our students? How we can partner with industries to train our students better? So that is the goal of this panel. And I hope we will learn a lot from both our sides. Okay, so with that, l let me introduce David Holt uh, from the Connexus Indiana. He's the Vice President of Operations. And let me just read. Um, so in his role with Connexus, Holt drives the logistics agenda and develop, recruited, and led the formation of the Connexus Indiana Logistic Council Executive Committee. So with that, let me welcome David. Okay, which area? Is it the right or the yeah, left? It's the right. Okay, great. Right. Well, number one, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the invite, and I'm very excited. Purdue is an incredible institution, as your dean just talked about. Um, I hope, can you all hear me? Because I really don't like to speak behind a podium, so I hope that's okay. Um, how many here have heard of Connectus Indiana? Eh, a lot more than I expected, so about a third of the room. Um, what can, there, there's three kinds of entities in the not-for-profit world. There's Chambers <coughs> of Commerce and Labor Unions. What they do is they lobby their governments to try to make things better for themselves or to maintain policies that are currently in place. There are local economic development organizations that take the assets inside of their community and try to sell them to companies to try to attract them here. That would be like the Tippecanoe County or the Lafayette um, Economic Development Corporation. Um, then there are what I call asset development entities. And honestly, there is nothing like Connexus across the country. We are very unique. In fact, we have, I just got back from the Mid-American Freight Coalition and we are pretty much a, a one in a, a million type entity. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, um, but what I want to talk about is why we were formed, what, why Connexus, and, and what are they? Well, in 2000, the Central Indiana Corporate Partnership, which is made up of the top corporations throughout Central Indiana um, and the major universities, in fact, Martin Jeske was very, very instrumental in this when he was president of Purdue University of forming Connexus. He was actually even on our board. Um, they kind of looked at said and said, we need to basically sort of break things up. We'd already created a life sciences initiative, and there's kind of five key clusters in Indiana that need to be focused on. Life sciences, technology, advanced manufacturing, and logistics, um, that, um, and clean and energy technologies. And in essence, um, from that study, we basically then formed these different initiatives. Now, Connexus is the only one that is statewide. The rest of them sort of focus on just central Indiana, but that's because logistics really is a holistic thing that, that goes across the state, but really it goes across even our own borders. And, and I would even call us Connexus because I work a lot with the other states surrounding us. Now, what's our mission? It's to serve as the catalyst to position Indiana as the recognized global leader in both advanced manufacturing and logistics. 
you can see that these are some of our boards. Obviously, Martin just is gone now, but like the board replaced him. Of course, Vic's retiring, and so I think Suresh uh, is, I can't never pr pronounce Suresh's last name, but Gurgamela, I think, um, Suresh will be replacing Vic on our board. But you can see that it's a group of high-level CEOs throughout the state of Indiana. Now, um, there's sort of two types of areas for which we focus on. The first is really to attract and train a 21st century workforce for the state of Indiana. And the second is to support the sector through research policy and infrastructure programs. I will talk about this side in the industry panel this afternoon. This morning, I'm going to talk about this side. And in essence, you know, we've identified that workforce development is really the top priority for employers in the state of Indiana and the quality of worker for which they need. Um, low skill and mid skill jobs have declined over the last 20 years, and they will continue to do so. The, the, the future is the high-tech, high-skilled jobs. I'll give you an example. David Holt, in order to pay his way through Ball State University when I got my undergrad, I worked at Donnelly's just south of here. I'm from Crawfordsville, Indiana, just south of here. I sat at the end of a line on a book press, and the pages came off, and I took the pages, and I pressed them together, and I hit a button, and it wrapped the pages, and I picked up the big bundle, and I stuck it onto a pallet, and then a forklift came and got it and took it over to the binding press, and they made all the books for Purdue University School um, for all your professors, obviously. So, the main thing I'm trying to get about that, though, is that job that David Holt did didn't take any skills. That job's gone now. Because what now is they have an electronic arm that's operated by a computer. But that job was replaced. It was re replaced by a computer technician that has to have at least a certification of some sort or at least a two-year associate's degree. So how do we get to that point where Indiana understands that and we try to change our culture here in our state? Every year in Indiana, uh, the Conexus does a report card. Um, we commission economists to do the report card study for us. Um, you can see that Indiana, um, on human capital, we have a C, um, a D minus um, for Kentucky. So, I mean, honestly, this is not just an Indiana problem. It is a problem that's really nationwide. Um, and I'm not sure how much better it's going to get. Now, I do have to say that because of our location, because of the kind of companies here, we do extremely well with logistics. We do extremely well with uh, manufacturing industry and the health industry. Um, our benefit costs um, are kind of low, and that's because they passed some legislation a couple years ago that kind of knocked us down. But in general, our statistics are pretty good, but they can always be better. And we should strive to be better. But the problem with Indiana's culture Let's just be honest. When I grew up at Donnelly's, it's my grandfather worked at Donnelly's, my great-grandfather worked at Donnelly's, my dad worked at Donnelly's, and I'm going to go work at Donnelly's. But in essence, that's not so true anymore because you can't just go work at those jobs because they need a higher level of skill. So how do we confront these challenges? Um, workforce readiness is the major threat for industry, not just in this state, but nationwide. And the scope of the challenge demands a collective, collaborative approach. Educators can't sit in their bubble anymore, and businesses can't sit in their businesses, and they can't basically not communicate with each other in order to try to provide solutions to this particular challenge. But today, I have to say this, and we deal with almost every major company throughout the state of Indiana, too many employers still embrace an outdated model of worker training. Um, results from a recent statewide employer survey kind of show you that, you know, 53% um, or over 53% of most employers say that their employers need, their employees need additional training. Oh, I don't know what I just did. Oh, there we go. Um, but employers are still hiring unskilled workers. So they're still hiring the GED and trying to train, and then they figure out they can't train, and then they end up having to lay them off. How do we fix that? And as you can see, we still have a huge percentage of folks hiring the GPD. Now, this is the old way. This is how we've done things, and it's, it's what we have to get away from. But you hire an unskilled worker, you train them in-house. It's very expensive, and it's very inefficient, and almost every company does it. Industries disengage from educational institutions. Now, that's getting a little better, but we need to get them connected in a better way. That's what Connexus is trying to do. As skill demands rise, so do training costs, which puts us at a competitive disadvantage. In perspective, advanced manufacturing leaders employees have no consistent path to employment. So what's the new way? We need to connect industry and academia. I talked about that just a minute ago. We need to solicit private sector input into the curriculums and the things that you're doing in your schools 
So it's relevant to every one of their students for when they go into the workplace. And I'm not going to lie, I mean, in, in the past days, and I, I don't think it's like that, I think it's changed, but in the past days, a professor went to elementary school, they went to secondary school, they went to high school, they went to get their master's, they went and got their PhD, and then they went back to school again, and a lot of them never, ever worked in the private sector, and they have no clue what the private sector really needs besides what they read in their books. Now, I think that's changing. I know Purdue's got LTAP and some other incredible programs where they're connecting with business. I know Purdue is really moving in that direction. I know Notre Dame is. Indiana schools in general, I think, are doing a pretty good job in that particular arena. And how do we market these programs aggressively to prospective employees? The other is to build a robust pipeline of qualified applicants. And that's what we're going to try to do, and how do we do it? Well, Connexus views ourselves sort of as the voice of industry in this particular arena. We're working right now with creating a high school program. And we have a new name for it. I can't remember what it is. I'm sorry. They just marketed it two days ago, so I haven't got it in vain in my brain yet. But basically, it's to take the current curriculum that's in place in our high school, and it's to ingrain um, advanced manufacturing and logistics curriculum into the high school core 40 technical programs, and also to try to get it into the regular core 40 program as well. So they have a history of manufacturing. They know what manufacturing is. They know what logistics is. They know what it does. They know what Six Sigma is, or at least what it's trying to accomplish. They don't need to have a mastery in it yet, but they have to have the concepts about all of these things that make business run and why it should run that way. Community college partnerships. The other thing we did was we identified when we were doing our strategic planning every single skill that was needed from a kid through high school all the way through his cert certification, the skills that a, a, a kid would need when he got an associate's degree, and at that point in time, we created this skills template, and then we've been working with community colleges in specific to basically then drive new programs. In fact, Harrison College took our skills template. They basically designed a program just for the logistics industry, and now they're offering it at their flagship store, or their flagship store, their flagship school in Indianapolis. And they're trying to expand that and try to get more people from the logistics industry to go into this particular um, operation. Marketing, now how do we get to kids? How do we get them to understand what that is? And I'll talk about that in a national campaign on a portable credential. So you know that when you've taken this Connexus credential, that if you move to Texas, that Texas employer knows that these are the skills he has. If you move to California, they know that these are the skills that they need to have. We're actually working with the National Association of Manufacturers Foundation to try to implement that in, a, in, in two organizations called MSSC and APEX, which are both sort of national training programs for both manufacturing and logistics. So, how do we attract and train the 21st century workforce? Well, once again, we have currently 89 high school champions. That are high schools that have said, we will implement your program. We've gotten signed off by the, second, the superintendent of public instruction in Indiana to offer this inside of all the schools. We've got 40 superintendents on board, so you can see that some superintendents are, you know, managed a couple of those schools. We've got pretty much every technical education center, ex I think except the one on board, um, I talked about the skills map. We also have a program called Dream It, Do It, and that was in conjunction with the National Association of Manufacturers. And it's a website where kids can go. It's extremely interactive. It's even got this cool program where you go on, and you all ought to go on and try to get on it, where you play a game that teaches you how you move a iPod, how it's manufactured, how it's created. They have to put numbers in there, and at the end of the program, it gives you a grade on how well you did on getting that to market and whether you could sell it or not. That gets kids interested, and our hope is it gets them into these professions. Then we're trying to hit them with social media awareness campaigns to try to drive them right into those kids, to, to get the kids to understand that. So we're using Facebook and LinkedIn and all these different mediums, Twitter, to try to get kids engaged, to drive them to the dream and do it, and to drive them into these particular professions. Now, in essence, this is the skills template. This is what we felt they needed to know in high school. And by the way, we convened... Um, it had a Six Sigma approach. Uh, Brightpoint actually did our program for the logistics industry. Um, and Cummins Engine had Six Sigma folks come in and do our manufacturing. And for, in, 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 in essence, these are the skills that you need to have when you graduate from high school. These are the skills that you need to have in order to get some sort of certification. And this is what you should have if you ever get an associate's degree in the state of Indiana. Now, in essence, at the very end of this, to get the associate's degree, we feel that every employee in the future is going to have to have these skills in order to compete in a world marketplace. And it's our job to try to drive them into there and try to get that. But it's also your job as both educators and as the private sector to make sure that
that you're hiring these folks and that you're not doing the old approach. Now, in essence, pathways were the first um, tier of the career pathways. We also created career pathway that basically said, this is, how, this is the stuff you need to do in high school, this is the stuff you need to do for certification, and it was approved by the State um, Board of Education. And Comexus was also instrumental in designing that skills template that we talked about a little bit earlier. These are the schools that are currently involved. Um, now, there is not a total of 64 here because I forgot two or three of them. My assistant actually forgot to put them in. But not a big problem. It's my fault because I didn't check it. But in essence, here are a lot of the high schools that are involved. If you know of high schools that are not on here that you think should be involved, if you know the folks that are at that high school, have them contact us and we will get them on board. This is the Dream to Do It website that I talked about earlier, um, but y'all might want to go check this out and try to get as many kids as you know interested in these particular careers. So in essence, um, um, we're also doing a program with the Manufacturing Institute to design to see what is the perfect credential. <clears throat> and that would be, you know, before you get an associate's degree, what is that perfect credential? We're working with the Gates Foundation, the Illumina Foundation, to try to drive that particular industry working with industry. And then eventually, we'll have this portable credential that industry will know that if you have this, I can hire this guy and I know he's got X, Y, and Z skills. So in essence, we did all these things. Um, the curriculum is being designed right now. It's going to be also offered electronically to where you can basically drive a lot of this stuff through new technologies. And in essence, I will talk about all of this stuff this afternoon. This is the other things that Connexus does. But in essence, I also run the Logistics Council, which basically does strategic planning and asset mapping of the things that we need to have in the future for the logistics industry. So I won't have any questions now because I know you'll have it during the industry panel, but I want to thank you for having <coughs> us. And there's a few more manufacturing or workforce facts. But in general, uh, this is a very, very important issue to us, and we hope that uh, you got some information out of this today. And I hope I didn't talk too fast because I know I did. <laughs> All right. Thank you.